All right, guys, welcome back to Sequence. I'm your host, Trevor Plouffe, and today my guest needs no introduction. He's your 2018 NL MVP. He's one of the best players on the planet, if not the best player on the planet right now. He's a guy that I got to spend a lot of time with a couple off seasons ago, uh, an all-around great guy, Christian Yelich. What's up, my man? What up, dude? How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm so happy you agreed to come on. Um, I texted you and I said, hey, do you have any interest in coming on? And you said, sure. And I said, when do you think? And you said, how about tonight? So yeah. uh, we, we got we this are. stuff right away. When, when, when the MVP comes and says, let's do it, you just do it. That's right. So I asked you for some highlights because that's kind of what the show's about. We go through a few highlights pitch by pitch, um, some highlights that kind of guys will look at to get back to when they're feeling good. And you told me that you're not a big highlight guy, you're more of an alignment guy. What, what exactly does that mean? I mean, I'll look at highlight. I think everybody watches their, their dig me tape every now and then just to, to, I think I do it more when, if I'm struggling and you want to get like uh, in the middle of the season, you want to get that positive feel back and that confidence. It, you can trick yourself. And I'm sure you've done it before where, you're like, man, I suck right now. And then you go in the video room and you're like, I'm going to watch some video. And you're like, you know what? I'm going to watch all my homers right now. And then you watch it. And you're like, man, this looks so easy. <laughs> and then you don't, you don't realize like all the, uh, you know, you, you forget about all your bad feelings and your bad thoughts that you had when you walked into that room. And you're like, all right, like, let me focus on like what I'm doing here. Um, yeah, I watch like my setup and my stance. Like if I feel like if I'm in that position, like if I'm in a good, good setup, I like my stance. I like how I look in the box and I have certain keys that, um, I look at, I think my setup allows me to get into a good position when I make my, my first move. And then when I feel, if I feel like I can get in that position and not have to work very hard to get in that position, then I feel like I can do whatever. Like I can cover the zone, every zone. I can cover every pitch. Like it doesn't. I'm in total control, and the only way I feel like I get out is if I do something stupid and get myself out, which we do a lot. Like you know what I mean? Or you'll just miss a pitch. Like it happens, but you know, you you get in that that zone and that feeling. Like you're not gonna you're not gonna succeed every time in the big leagues. It's not gonna happen. But that mindset, you have that mindset. You know what I mean? Of like I am does not i am in total control right now like you know i might maybe i'll line out or something here but i'm it's not gonna that's the only way this is going down and it's a great feeling to have but you're always you're searching for that all season you have like the times when you feel great i feel like i say i think you have two weeks if you're very fortunate every season where you're just like blacked out red hot and you're lighting the world on fire and you have about two weeks where you suck like you someone could throw you front toss in the game and you're going to find a way to hit no double play or punch out and the rest of the time you're kind of surviving and, and working towards that two-week feeling or you have these certain keys that you're just working for and you're surviving and you're competing and that's a baseball season it is. Like, at least it is for me like i don't know how you felt playing but I that's how i feel like you don't you don't feel locked in all year oh absolutely not i mean everyone always says you try to ride the wave when you're going hot or for you, I mean, the last couple of years, it seems like you've had that kind of wave going more often than not, which, like you said, is an excellent feeling. Uh, what's cool about our relationship is, I mentioned before, we got to work out together. And in that off season, I got to hit with you. So I got to kind of experience, like, you know, what you're thinking. And now we want to pass it along to kind of who's watching this. And one yeah. thing that I thought was really cool, I just kind of asked you, one day like did something just like click like you were always a really good player and then you see that from time to time you guys will just say just clicked and mm -hmm. i asked you if that if you had a moment like that and you, you kind of did do you want to share that with with everybody yeah i i did and i didn't like i had a moment where i definitely changed right i changed to more of a, a little bit upright but it was probably I'd say it was probably a two to three week moment, right? I had the initial idea, mm -hmm. but you know, as a hitter, little changes feel huge to you yes. at first. Like you can be like, oh, my hands are like right here. And then you raise them to like right here and you feel like they're up here. You know what I mean? Like that's what it feels like originally as a hitter. So you, in your mind, you're like, oh, I'm making this big drastic change. 
but then you go watch the video and you're like, oh man, it's not really that big of a change, but it feels different. You think it's different. And sometimes that's everything. It's such a mental game. Like sometimes that's just it. Right. And so I definitely made a change where I was more upright, but I definitely wasn't as upright as I thought at mm-hmm. first. And then as that two, three week period probably goes by, and this is after the 2018 all-star break. Um, I did it the first game back, but looking at where it was the first game to where it was probably in mid August or beginning of September, it was, it's, it's definitely even more different then. it's, it's like, it's very noticeable. And that happened over time. Like I didn't watch video and be like, okay, I'm going to open up a little bit more and I'm going to narrow. Like I, I thought I was doing all those things already. And then I think with just having the thought process, my body just followed suit in a way. But the reason I did that is because after the All Star Game, you fly back home and you have a, you have like a, you have an off day in a sense. Like you get back early in the morning and you have the rest of the day off, and the next day is the start of the second half of the season. And so you're kind of relaxing, um, just resting up, getting ready to take on the second half. And I, I got my iPad out and I did what we were talking about. I was like, let me see, like, cause I, I wasn't feeling great going into the break. Like I made the all-star team, but I wasn't feeling like in one of those locked in phases, I was more surviving. So I was like, all right, before the second half starts, like I just wanted to watch my like video of when I was doing well and see if I could pick out something that like stood out. Right. And like really just self analyze and like just be like, what do I do when I have the most success? Which in my, I was driving the ball with authority, which was a home run. Mm -hmm. So I went and looked at them all from 2016, 2017 and 2016 is the year where I first started hitting for power in the big leagues. I hit 21 homers, which was a, was a career high for me at the time. And I got to work with Barry for that park. Yeah, Marlins Park. It was it was a lot, but when you're playing with guys like Stan and stuff, you're like, oh, yeah, this guy's this guy had 21 homers at the end of May a lot of yeah. the times, right? So you're like, oh, okay, like cool. Here's your 21 homers, buddy. And <laughs> I thought it was sick, but I you know, too. on the right, the guy hitting before you and after you was like, ah, that's cool, man. <laughs> but anyway, that was the first year that I started hitting for power, and the hitting coaches at the time and um, Miami were Barry Bonds and Frank Menachino. And obviously everybody who's watching this, you know, who Barry is and, mm-hmm. you know, regardless of your feelings, a guy that's hit more homers than anybody on planet earth, yes. you know, or at least who hasn't played major league, at least major league baseball, <laughs> um, you know, you're going to listen and this, he really knows, he really knew a lot about the game. Like anybody can go out there and hit a homer like you can go deep in a game. And you can have no idea why. Like, yeah, sure, I hit the ball hard and it went over the fence. And mm-hmm. by definition, that, that's a home run. But why did that happen? Like, what allowed that to happen? And as a young player, I, I never really knew. I was like, oh, yeah, that felt good. That was a good yeah. swing. But why was it a good swing? And why did it? Why did all that happen? And Barry explained it to me in terms that the Instagram hitting coach – would not love right but i say the twitter you, coach right it's both like it you know it, it, and we were talking before we started this of like you know what it would be like as a young player to be able to do something like this and learn the game that way mm-hmm. which who knows if me and you are right i'd like to think we are but i would think that we probably have at least an understanding of what it's going to take to succeed at the major league level and and what you can apply from cage bp to game like yes. some things can look sick in the cage or sick in bp so sick. and then you suck in the game because it just doesn't translate because when dudes are throwing a hunch grabbing double zeros with sink or the four seam fastballs that'll blow your doors off sometimes you just you know can't take what you learned on the gram and throw it in the major league batter's box. Yeah. I mean, the guy's throwing in the cage. I always say that to people in the cage, you can get away with so much because there's no variables. A guy is flipping the ball to you or he's throwing overhand at 45 miles an hour. And right. there's and just it's the same every time, same every time. So you need, like you're saying, you got to have something that you can take into the game because you could do all you want in BP and hit mammo bombs, which you and I both know a lot of players that do that and can't take it into the game. 
Um, yeah. But you're saying sure. that you guys wanted that you were talking about something. Yeah. So we got off track a little bit, but sorry. Just kind of a this, no, but I, that was my fault. But it's, it it applies in the sense of the terminology I'm about to use and explain the way that Barry explained it. If you took it to somebody on social media or the guys that do those those videos, it would just like yell at you all day and like, no, this is totally wrong. But it's probably the same thing that we're talking about, just a different way of getting there sure. and a mindset and a way to think. So he, we, we, I remember this day exactly. It was uh, we were playing the Fort Bragg game uh, against the Braves at Fort Bragg, the military base, and. They built these facilities there, and they're really nice, actually. If they just built them and then donated them to the, the military afterwards, but uh, it was like 105 in Fayetteville, North Carolina, in like July, and we're in this cage, and it's like tarped in, and it's just it's probably 120 in this thing, and I was trying to find it again. I, I was kind of struggling a little bit and trying to do some drills in the cage, and, and Barry was in there with me with Frank and. Uh, you know, I thought I always thought as a young player when I wanted to drive the ball, I would do it with my body. And by that, I meant like, you know, in BP, if you're like, all right, hit a homer and your your hip will fly, your front side will fly, everything, because you're, you're just straight yank. Mm -hmm. And that's the complete opposite of what you want to do when you're trying to hit a homer. And so Barry got me in there and spread me out really wide and was like, hit this ball off the front of the plate, like the, the white part of the plate. And I was like, uh, okay. okay. You know? So I, he, I think he had Frank flip and he was watching. And so I'm pretty, I'm spread out to the part my landing point. So if I did my leg kick and you stride out to where your foot landed, that's where, that's how wide I was. And I'm just sitting there and this is, it was a no stride drill. And it was just like hit the front of the plate. And I was like, okay, cool. I, I he throws me the ball and like I try and chop this shit right off the front of the plate and I hit it maybe six feet out in front of the plate, like bounce and goes into the screen, whatever. And he goes, I said the front of the plate. I was like, Oh shit. All right. So back again, hit it this time, probably like two or three feet. And he was like, I said right off the plate. And I was like, I'm trying dude. And so I do it again. I, I miss again and he grabs the bat and he does it. He just, pounding balls off the off the plate and i'm like what is going on right here but i was like yeah, i'm just gonna i'm, just I'm riding this out up. right you're right he, he grabbed and he like showed me what he was talking about so he oh, pounded a few he found pounded a few off the off the plate so, all right let's do that so i i get in i start doing that and then after a few of that he's like okay now i want you to um you know, chop it where I was originally, like six, seven feet out there like that. And we slowly did that and we brought the ball up to probably about line drive level where it was just like, and I still had that chopping feeling, mm -hmm. but you're, I wasn't actually like steep down, mm -hmm. you know, it was just like your path was so short and cleaned up and it was his way of cleaning up his bat path Interesting. when he played. And it's a feel, you know, and thinking that of, swing down because you hear the swing down some guys say that still like if you hear the old school or i wouldn't say old school but a rod berries like these guys all talk about chipper they all talk about swinging down and that's why they're kind of against the instagram twitter people because they're they're so anti that yes. and if i hit a ball off the top of this cage in this drill i i, I might have got punched in the face you know <laughs> what i mean not literally but it would have it would have been just like a what are you doing moment and so it was like, it was creating like true backspin. Like the ball was coming off and I was trying to hit this bitch straight in the ground. And it was like opposite field, backspin missile, up the middle, backspin missile, pull side, backspin, backspin, like true pull side. And I was like, damn, like I've never really done that before. And if I had, it was a pure luck accident. And I never really understood it. I was always a guy that just hit and could feel when it felt good and not good. Sure. I just hit, I had no... I had no reasoning behind anything and I was like, man, like, that feels pretty good. And like my, I wasn't, I was hitting against my front side in a, in a sense of where like it wasn't leaking first before I went to swing. And that's why everything was so true. And I was short and I could pull the ball correctly instead of top spinning it or hooking it foul. 
And I took it in BP that day and it was the best batting practice I'd probably ever had in my entire life. It was like just homers, like everywhere, all parts <laughs> of the field, back spun, like Were you still trying back. to do that? You were still trying to have that feel of like kind of just back spinning the ball, like, like that? Like yeah, I was trying to do, I was, I had the, yeah, I had that feel of, um, not, I wasn't trying to hit off the plate anymore, but I was trying to just like keep it, I guess on the line for, for lack of a, a, a better term. And I wasn't like, if I did, it was like that ball that you hit, that's a, a two iron into the gap that one hops the wall. Otherwise it was a homer. It was like one of those BP days. Yeah. Great. And, uh, I love that. yeah. And, and, uh, that's when I was like, damn, like I really kind of bought into it in a sense of like, all right, like this is, this might be for real. Like I felt really good about it. And, I think I only hit seven homers in the first half of that season. I ended up hitting 14 uh, in the second half of that year. Working on this and, mm-hmm. um, you know, that was the first time I really understood how to pull a ball correctly in the air and hit for power and, like, what I did personally. And What uh, do you think that did for you? I mean, I get, like, it, sh- it just shortened you to the zone. Do you feel like – does that mean – because I've been it showed me how to do it correctly like it showed me how to do it correctly like, pull the ball I, I I never really pulled the ball in the air much when I was a young player because mm-hmm. I was doing it that's wrong good. you know what I mean so I think you need that I think guys need that like they always say you learn to pull the ball last I think you have to be able to hit the ball the other way to learn how to pull the ball right and maybe I'm completely yeah. off, off here but that's in my experience that's what it was yeah I mean see now it really helps me because I have I have that club in the bag still like I still can do what I used to do when I was a young mm-hmm. player I just have built on that and I, I, I'll be, I was a good hitter but I never really hit for damage I, I could always get on base hit for a decently high average um, and use the whole field I always had that skill set and then I, I, I kind of ran into this that one day and it was the beginning of like an understanding of how to to do that for me and it didn't translate overnight that was 2016 and yeah. now we're talking about a, a clip in 2019 but it's you're you're constantly working as a as a player so anyways we're getting off to, we, okay. that's a long story to get back to the day before the, the that was excellent all-star break so yeah. i was watching that video from 2016 and that's why i started there that's that's basically why i started there in a sense that's why okay. Such a long story, but kind of had to explain it. And so I started with my second half homers from 2016, and watched 16, 17. And I don't think I, I don't know if I watched any of 18 or not because they're still in that year. But I watched it. And I was like, what are the similarities here? And it was that I was always a little bit more on time. I was mm-hmm. a little bit earlier. The swings were probably the same, but I wasn't as on time. Um, when I drove the ball and I think a lot of guys that happens to is like, they think they're on time, but you're really not. And I was one of those guys. Mm -hmm. And so I always notice that I I have that little pause when I hit kind of, you know what I mean? Like the little knee tuck and it it almost looks like a pause. And I noticed that when I hit those homers, like that was, I was there a little earlier and I was able to hold it. And then if I swung and then I was swinging the way that I just kind of explained in a sense. Mm -hmm. And, Oh, that was another thing about that drill. You throw them like at your, at your chest in a way. And this kind of applies to this next, it's kind of applies to this next video. Okay. So it it, it was like, (laughs) it was like, right. So, but it's actually good that we're talking about this because we're about to watch it play out. Mm -hmm. And the drill was to, to like basically chop with your top hand to where you felt like you're almost like, swinging down like you're like casting the barrel i guess like if you're gonna fish like in front of your face but it okay but it it, it it you think that happens in your head but it really doesn't it's just a way to get there very quickly and efficiently but it, it took this drill and learning how to do it and being doing it over and over again in the cage and eventually it took over here but we're getting did ahead you, of ourselves did you continue to do it so you said all-star break you're watching the video and you come back, you told me before that you got a little bit more upright, just kind of felt you wanted to get into the box and feel comfortable. So you said you, you started to feel a little bit upright. 
Well, I'll tell you why I got upright in a second is, okay. so I watched it and I was like, I got, I was always on time more and I was able to hold that pause better. And mm. I'm, I, was, I was thinking, okay, like I, I think I identified like what I want to try and do. Who knows if this is going to work or not, but this is what I want to try and do. And I was like, I hold this pause I, and, but how am I going to do that? When you're spread out, like it's a little harder to balance. You know, if you spread your legs out really far right now, you pick your front one up, it, it, you're not really balanced. You're going to mm. fall off of it. So the idea behind standing a little bit taller was like, I can, you're in a more athletic position. You can, you can hold your weight a little bit better. You're just, you're just more balanced that way. You know, if your legs are closer together, you can hold that little sure. pause. Okay. Little, I, I call it, they call it the, the ninja position or mm-hmm. moose likes to call it that. So we'll call it that. <laughs> okay. So I, I can hold that little pause, that little position better like that because I'm more balanced and I'm not falling out of it. Right. So I was like, that's why I started standing straight up and, okay. Or I went in the cage that day and I was like, hey, I'm going to try something for like 15 swings. I'm kind of getting loose. Don't say anything. I used to hit really <laughs> <Don't> tall. <say> <laughs> <anything. laughs> yeah. Don't say anything. Don't freak out. Like, I'm kind of just getting loose. But in my mind, I was trying something. And I used to hit tall as a, as a, in high school. So it wasn't like completely foreign to me. And then once mm-hmm. I got in the, the minor leagues, they spread me out and put me in my legs more. I don't know. But okay. anyway. <laughs> so you go in there. I just want I just want to clear this because – you stand taller. You go in the cage. Are, do you do that drill again? Are you hitting, chopping down? I didn't do the drill. I didn't do the drill, but I drew back on the, the thoughts the and thoughts. the thought process behind it. I didn't do that. I do do that drill still every now and then. If mm-hmm. I need to, like, if I feel like I want to clean up my back path or really feel something, it's a go-to thing. I mean, maybe once or twice a month. Um, yeah, I mean, look, it, when you really think about the drill, I used to do high T as well and really feel that, that backspin. And you just can't mm-hmm. lose your barrel and, like, get long with it. And expect to come back and 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 like feel like on top of the ball like that and, and creating that true backspin. So I think that's kind of right. Is that what I'm? I, is that right? Like yeah, I, that? I, yeah. I watched this the fight of the ball in the cage when I did this drill mm-hmm. and like the feel of it. And if it's not the, the ball fight's not good, I know I'm doing this drill wrong. I love that. And I might be thinking I'm doing it right, but there's something going on that's a little off. And then I watch the flight of the ball, and that's how I can tell if I'm in a a good position and doing what I'm supposed to do. Cause you have a lot of false feels as a hitter that like you think you're doing stuff all the time. And you're, not, you're not even close. So absolutely being able to have some instant feedback for me is like, okay, cool. I can try and get this train back on the tracks a little bit quicker by just going to this. Like this is for me, is like my process of like, all right, let's get to the bottom. Like enough's enough. Like let's figure this out. And I for me, that. that's what that was. And I'm not a big T guy, so I don't hit high T. So I just do high flips. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, so that's why I started standing tall and doing this position of like, um, you know, being a little bit more on time. And I started raking in the case. Like, <laughs> it was just missiles and I was on time and it was a, it was a good feeling. Sorry, I'm like the camera's falling here. It's but, all good. Uh, it's all good. I, I, I like, love that because is- you do have times. Like if I, if I go in the cage and I say, I just want to feel like athletic and as easy as I can swing, like I would get more upright and the ball does jump off your bat. I could never bring that into the game. I felt like my head moved too much or maybe I didn't give it enough time. I probably should have done that. I probably should have tried it. But Well, um, it's changed so much. It's, it's changed for me, like in my head and like even on film so much from that day to where I'd probably put it at now. And that's just mm-hmm. from – that's from always constantly evolving. It's from why I tried it in the first place. To. You're constantly evolving. You're trying to get better. You're trying to make it more efficient, more repeatable. And what's cool this is, is just like, I was like, go ahead. No, I was just like me talking through the process of like how I, how I got there. And maybe it was a risk to try this because like I was an all-star at that point during the season. And like a lot of times when you do this stuff, it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Like you, and you try, we've all tried stuff as a hitter and like this is not it right absolutely but i felt comfortable doing this because i used to do it when i was younger and it was natural to me so i, I felt a little bit more convicted in it than i i would with any other change and felt like i had a good reason behind it and it wasn't just blindly experimenting during the season which can result in disaster especially after you're already an all-star but I love that you're right, willing to make right. the adjustment to get even better. And you did. And then fast I forward. just knew there was more in there. I just knew there was more in there, you know? It just, like, I could tell, but I just didn't know what it was. 
And you ended up winning the MVP. Your right. And like when I tried that, it was like the farthest thing from my mind at that point in the season. Like it was not even the discussion of being an MVP and then just went and crushed it the second half. So that brings us to 2019. So you're coming mm-hmm. off an MVP year. Um, this is one of the first games of the year. Uh, we'll get to the highlight now. And what I love about this highlight is because we do hear so much about putting the ball in the air, there is an emphasis on having that trajectory on your swing path. You want to be swinging up. A la, like a Joey Gallo, he's a guy that does that. A lot of guys, are, a lot of guys do it, but there's one thing that pitchers are doing to counter that right now, and it's that four-seam elevated heater. And it's really hard mm-hmm. to get on plane with that if you're thinking about hitting the ball in the air. Right, so, and to touch on the swing up thing, I could, for me, I've never been on the swing up thing. I think that's the wrong. I think people like misconstrue like hitting the ball in the air with with swinging up. Sure. Like swinging up has absolutely nothing to do with hitting the ball in the air. Actually, you're probably going to be a really bad hitter if you swing up. Like your your barrel's in the zone for this long, mm-hmm. and when balls are moving like crazy in the big leagues, it's sinking, cutting. Nasty curveballs, really good changeups. If your barrel's in the zone for this long, you're going to hit like 200. Maybe you're going to hit for some power if you're a really strong guy. But it's also know thyself. Don't be a guy that's trying to hit all these homers if you're not a big, strong kid or guy because it's not going to, if you're not capable of doing it, don't try and do it in a sense. But to me, I think hitting the ball in the air has everything to do with where you hit the ball on the plate. Like if you hit it a little bit more out front, then you're going to drive that ball in the air. If it beats you a little bit and you catch it back, you could have the same swing. Like that could have been a homer swing, but your Mm -hmm. timing was off or you you got beat a little bit, which happens all the time and you hit it in the ground. And that has nothing to do with like you swung down or you didn't swing up. It was just like, Oh, well you got your doors blown. And that's where it goes back to my thing about timing. It was like, this was kind of right when the launch angle revolution type thing happened. And everybody wanted me to say, I bought into the launch angle. I started swinging up. I made all these mechanical adjustments and it's it's really not true like i didn't i just changed my timing and my setup a little bit to allow myself to be a little more athletic more efficient and in turn i was catching the ball in a better zone for hitting than i was previous and so people were always like oh you wouldn't be this kind of player that you were in miami that you were in miami if you were still in miami and i i think that's complete bullshit because i know i would be i Um, agree just because these changes translate and there's a reason and i know why they do because i did them and it wasn't because of the launch angle thing because mm-hmm. if you're swinging straight up like you said these guys throwing a hunch at the top of the zone it's not gonna it's, sorry bud like you're gonna see three pitches and then that's it you're gonna get your glove and hopefully go play some good d <laughs> but that's all that's gonna happen in that situation and when i see your swing you talked about the, you know having kind of an uppercut swing you're gonna be in and out of the zone very quickly and your swing stays in the zone. It gets in the zone early, and it stays in the zone long. And that's kind of, mm-hmm. when you watch good hitters, that's what they do. And it allows for air. Like, you, your timing is everything. And if you're a little tardy on a pitch, but you get, you get to uh, your path quick enough, you're, you're going to mm-hmm. spray that ball to the opposite field. If you're a little early, yeah. you're gonna, your hands are still going to be there. You're going to hit that ball down the left, or your, your pull side. And I think that's what you yeah. do really well. And I think we're going to see that. Yeah, and you're going to hit balls hard. You're going to hit balls hard and give you a chance when you don't make the perfect contact. All right, so let's get this up. Let's set this up. This is um, beginning of 2019. You're facing Michael Walker. He's known for mm-hmm. his curveball. You know, he throws hard. Um, so you're walking up. Big, bad NL MVP. And we'll just <laughs> go ahead and start the at-bat here. Calm, collected. Walking up here. Mm-hmm. When did you start with the show piece on the on the face? Uh, when I got to the Brewers, they were like they're really big on it organizationally. Like they just think it's 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 a safe thing to do, and um, they were like, "Hey, we're gonna have these available for everybody. If you want to try them, go ahead." And I saw Mikey got hit in the face, and I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna give this a shot." <laughs> and I really liked it in spring training, so I was like, "You know what, dude? That guy throws so hard now, and you know, it's not always about." command is is about stuff these days so yeah i'm comfortable with it i like it and um that's why i start wearing it well it's super show so i love it it is show too that helps and it's good for when you're pissed you can grip something and just beat the hell out of your helmet once a year only (laughs) i I went through a lot of helmets myself no doubt i only go through one a year one a year (laughs) all right 
Well, let's um, set this up again. Michael Walker. I think you've already hit homers to start the season. I think it's like the third game of the season. I think you already have. This, one's the, this one's the fourth game. This is the fourth yeah, game. Yeah, I, I, I hit a homer in the first three games. So I was feeling pretty good. So you got that, we had to tell that because of this first pitch. Let's get to the first pitch. First pitch, he wants no party. He's like, I'm going to throw the curveball. Hopefully it's a get me over. I get, I get ahead of him over. Right, well, and then I can go from there. Well, yeah, and you got to remember, like, Yachty is awesome. He's like, the, I think he's sure. he's definitely the smartest catcher in the game. He's, he's going to be a Hall of Famer. And he knows, like, he knows, like, I always feel like he knows what you can't hit that day. <laughs> after a few after a few swings, you're like, dude, this guy knows. Because he's throwing you stuff that night that he wasn't the night before. He can just, I don't know, he can just tell. I'm convinced. But uh, I was feeling really good. I felt like I could, I could cover a lot of things at that time. Like you said, it's the first inning, one out, nobody on base. And they go first pitch curveball out the gate. You know what's and coming Waka, next. Well, you don't know, but you have an educated guess. Like he's got, he's the twelve six curveball straight over the top guy, and mm-hmm. so he loves the high fastball or the one that looks like it's going to hit the dirt, sticks at the zone, and then he throws the split off that low one, get you to chase. And he's got a really good split too, and he's got good stuff. And so they went curveball mm-hmm. miss, went curveball miss. So a lot of things happen like that when, when a guy goes curveball bad miss like that, either he's coming back with it because he feels like he didn't throw a good one and he can still get it to steal a strike get himself back in the zone. Or they're using that as a setup pitch and there's so much with tunneling like, okay, he's throwing this curveball and then he's going to try and throw like high heater off of it, either get you to chase or foul it off and get another strike. Mm-hmm. Um, or you're wrong and you'd like to take in that situation, but most of the time you don't you swing and miss. It's just you know, a lot of the time you're going to fail a lot of times in this game, but you got to be able to think through it. At least I do. And I remember thinking after this bad miss, like, I think this guy's going high heater right now, you know, <laughs> like for whatever reason. And I, I think sometimes when you feel good at the plate, like your, your thoughts flow better too. Like you just feel like, okay, I kind of like, I just have this feeling. I can't explain it. of like, I just think this is what's going to happen right here. And a lot of that sequencing, and the more you see it, the more you're mm-hmm. exposed to it, the better you are at picking it up or making, I guess you call them educated yeah. guesses here. What's funny and is so we're going to see that. him set up uh, on this next pitch. Mm-hmm. And it's really funny because it's exactly what he's trying to do. Yachty's trying to tunnel that curveball. He's like, all right, he missed up. Now, that's fine. We don't want to groove my heater, you know, down and away or something like that. Because we've seen this guy – Go up top to left field, no problem. So you watch where he sets up here. You have your educated guess. You said, I think he's coming high heater. And watch where we have the target. I'll go back right there. You kind of messed that up right there. But if we no, watch where good. he has a target, he's setting up up and in. All right, which is really hard pitch to handle. He throws it there, and you just, I don't even know how you hit that pitch. It's gotta, because. Look at this pitch, man. It's a, There's a lot of reasons. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's not in a bad spot from a pitcher's point of view. Like, he's probably not upset with that location. I he's scratching think, his head being like, what just happened right there? Now that's your fourth right. homer, fourth game of the year. He's kind of like, well, this is Christian Yelich. He's locked in. What are you going to do? That's what I would be thinking, at least. So, the only reason I could get to that pitch was, A, like, semi, I, I, semi looking for it, but not really. I wasn't like, 100% this guy's coming for it. It was just like, in the back of your mind. But it was more of a, I was so on time. Like, if you watch this video, if you play it back to like, where he's about to release the ball, and to where I am in my late kick, like, I'm at the top of it. So, it's just like, all I got to do now is go from here to here before that ball gets to the plate. Like let's, if we let's see if I can get it. You're early. You're like already, I'm already down. down. Yeah, I'm already coming down. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. the only reason I can get to that pitch is because I'm, you're on time. You know what I mean? Like you can't – if you're late on this at all, and a lot of times you are during the season because if you're not really – 
everything synced up, you're not going to happen. And this is like a perfect storm of events right here. But the timing was really good. And it goes back to, and I remember, and I remember the feeling on this homer was, it was the feeling of the drill that we were just talking about. Like I was able to see the ball. I was able to see the ball here, recognize what was happening and go from here. And it felt like I was like almost like casting the bat in front. It was like the swing down, like a chop in a sense. And it just like was so short and like it just happened so quickly that I just, got to it easily you and backspun that ball even as high as it was you backspun that ball big time yeah it was clean it was true like there was no hook or mm -hmm. anything to it like it was they're giving you the exactly like the drill was except it was in a game and it was a 90 whatever it was mile an hour fastball and it doesn't always work out that way a lot of times that ball is fouled off or popped up to the third baseman mm -hmm. or usually not resulting in a pull side homer we're gonna and go a little further up because it's gonna show highlights again <clears throat> um yeah, that was incredible. Ronnie let me go. I know I saw Grab it. He pops up. Here we go. Now there's going to be some highs. We're going to see the slow-mo. We're going to see what you're talking about. You're already down. And so that feel is not a swing down, but it feels like, you know what I mean? Like, Watch that again. And there's no leak on my front side. Like, it's clean, you know? If there's any leak on your – you lose your barrel and your swing becomes long. It, see, it's almost like a – but that's the drill. That's the exact drill right there from that side view. If you can look at that, like – Let's go back again. Your hands are just up. Like, if you look at it, your hands go from here to just here. Like, it's almost straight across your face. I think the no leak thing is important there because if you leak, you're not going to get to that ball. Not at that, not right, because you like that. right, you're gonna lose your barrel, and if that's when it's the the foul ball or pop up to third foul ball or just complete swing and miss altogether. But if you stay in there on that, you can be really short, and if you do it right, and you, I, and I it was just like it's just my drill, like I just do that drill, so I was able to handle that ball. I love it. Yeah, I love it was, how it all came full circle. From right, that's why we had to tell all those stories to that because. Love it. 2018 yeah, to go a, with it. 2019, you bring it back in. You get that exact same pitch. You feel the drill. Mm -hmm. And you hit a bomb on a pitch that, you know, 99% of guys can't do that. But the way you had approached it, it allowed you to get to that ball and do the right thing with it. Yeah, I'd say it was probably, like like you said, a perfect storm of events. But there was, that was the thought process along with it. And you have to also be able to be in the position to, to handle a pitch like that. Well, this was a master class in the way you approach the game, the way that you approach drills, bringing stuff into the game. And I really appreciate you coming on with us. We have one more bet to go through. Um, mm -hmm. But for this first clip, thank you. And uh, let's get to the next one. Appreciate it, dude.